Hey guys, <laughs> so I honestly had no plan on making this video because I thought it'd be too late in the game, but I asked if you still wanted it and I got a resounding yes, so here we go. This is how I set up my OnePlus 7 Pro. Now, you might have noticed that in my review video, I didn't have the current cosmetic look I have here. Why? I, I don't know, but don't worry, if you like this look, I'll go over it a little later in the video. Uh, first, let's start with the settings so you can see how I got a mostly frustration for user experience instead of letting the phone do its own thing and act up like a four-year-old having a temper tantrum. Okay, so we're gonna skip past the top three sub-menus because I don't think you need help on any of that if you do, this is the wrong channel for you because I'm already generating negative opinions about you. So let's jump straight into display settings. I almost always leave adaptive brightness off because on every single phone I've ever reviewed, it's always been so inconsistent. Like the other day, I was just sitting on the couch browsing Instagram with adaptive brightness enabled and out of nowhere, the brightness dropped to like 10% for no reason. The ambient lighting didn't change or anything, so I, I don't know. Anyways, after my nose stopped bleeding from that frustration, I confirmed with myself that adaptive brightness is a no-no from now on for me. I set sleep to 30 minutes because I don't know how long I'm gonna be pooping for when I'm on the toilet. I don't mess with night mode because I don't like the display colors changing when I'm dicking around with my phone at night. And I don't mess with reading mode because if I wanted to read a book on a mobile device, I'd use a bloody tablet. Screen calibration. Okay, so this is one I found I kind of bounce back and forth on. Like there's five display modes and they all serve a purpose. Like when I'm recording my on-camera A-roll like I am right now, I'll switch to sRGB in advanced when I go to use my camera's companion app so I can make sure I'm exposed properly and the colors look more or less natural. But the rest of the time, I usually prefer eye-melting saturation, so I'll pick either vivid or AMOLED wide gamut under advanced. In screen refresh rate, you guys know me. Of course I go with 90 hertz. Does it sacrifice a bit of battery life? Yeah, a bit. Do I care? Eh, um, no. Nope, not even a little. Well, yeah, no. In resolution, QHD plus? Um, yes please, cause when I'm watching a video, I wanna see some motherfucking skin pores. Does it drain battery quicker too? Hell yeah. Again, do I care? Not as much as I care about having an amazing visual experience. Uh, now, I leave video enhancer off on like all phones. It always seems to mess with the brightness, contrast, and other variables that eventually piss me off, especially when I forget that I enabled it and can't figure out why video content looks like shit all of a sudden. <laughs> okay, so ambient display. This is a sensitive subject for me because tap to show works maybe 50% of the time for me. It's super frustrating. And if I have to pick up my phone to show notifications, I'm may as well just hit the bloody power button to wake it, right? So instead of using ambient display, I have double tap to wake enabled, which actually works consistently every time. No more frustration nosebleeds, thank you. Uh, so moving on, um, I obviously have the theme set to dark because, you know, sexy. Accent color, I usually try to match to either the icons or wallpaper I'm using. So after spending a psychologically unhealthy amount of time trying to dial in a color I like, I settled on this sort of in-between pink, magenta, and red color. I don't know how it looks on camera, but there's the hex code in case you wanted it too. Font, I set to one plus slate because well, I don't know, cause why not? Uh, font and display size, I leave as default. Now for the status bar, I actually choose to hide the battery indicator icon and opted for just the percentage to keep it looking clean. Everything else is left at default. Now in sound and vibration, I have Dolby Atmos set to dynamic. Personally, I'm not even sure why there's three options. I mean, why wouldn't you want it to dynamically change on the fly to better suit whatever content you're watching or listening to? Earphone adjustment, I leave as default. And then under earphone mode, I keep everything disabled. And below that is vibration which I have enabled for calls and touch vibration. I went with the zzzz, zzzz pattern <laughs> and I have vibration intensity set to strong because that's what kind of guy I am. I don't know what that means. Uh, under system, I have touch sounds and dial pad tones disabled because as I've mentioned in the past, I hate people with that shit enabled and I don't want to hate myself any more than I already do. I do, however, have screen lock sounds enabled simply because it's satisfying, no other reason. <laughs> and screenshot sound is disabled because I'm not an idiot and don't need both a visual and audio aid telling me that a screenshot's been captured. There's also a notification you get, so I don't need three things telling me, you know what? Never mind. let's move on. In buttons and gestures, I leave the alert slider at its default settings, but it sure would be nice to have the option to reverse the order. I mean, when you turn on a light switch, the switch goes up, not down. I don't know, just a personal preference thing. I'm not gonna catch aids without the option or anything like that. Navigation bar and gestures. Okay, so in my review, uh, I have the buttons enabled, mainly so I don't fumble around on camera during B-roll, but I've been playing with full-on gesture controls for a bit now because it just makes the display look so damn clean. 
Now, remember that double tap to wake feature I was talking about that actually works, unlike that stupid tap to show option that almost works? Yeah, well, under quick gestures, I have everything disabled except for double tap to wake. Like, I'm sorry, but drawing shit on your home screen to launch an app or control music is just beyond stupid to me. Totally a personal preference thing, so if you use those, I apologize if I've offended you but not really. Anyways, I have quick turn on camera enabled cause launching the camera by tapping on the app icon is so 2015, I think. Or whenever that feature started showing up in phones. Same thing as quick activate the assistant app, but more so because why not? It's there. <laughs> now under battery, I've actually adjusted a couple things here, but I can't remember which options were set by default and which I've actually adjusted. So we'll just go through them together. Uh, battery saver is off because I don't need it or like its effects for that matter. But battery optimization on the other hand has just a few changes because by default, every single app in this list is optimized, but I don't want certain apps put to sleep or killed off. So I've unoptimized Google opinion rewards, for example, because I'm cheap and I like free Google Play credits and I want to be notified as soon as those surveys are available. So I strongly recommend you all go through this list on your phones too, just in case. And last, I have adaptive battery enabled because I actually think it does a great job. Uh, under storage, I have storage manager disabled just because I like to control what gets deleted and when that stuff gets deleted. But it might actually be a great option for some of you because it auto deletes photos and videos that are over 90 days old. Remember, as phone storage fills up, the systems slow down. Anyways, in security, and lock screen under security status, I have find my device enabled. That's sort of a no brainer. And then under device security, I have just two fingerprints registered, my thumb for when I'm holding the phone and my index finger for when it's flat on a table. And, and that's it. I just don't trust face unlock, especially when I have all my YouTube related and personal accounts on my phone. And last in utilities, I literally don't use anything here. Um, like I don't typically game on my phones. I don't use quick pay. I don't run parallel apps. I don't need an app locker because I'm not a pedophile file or a murderer for that matter. So I've got nothing to hide that you know of. I don't use scheduled power on and off anymore. And OnePlus switches for when you're setting up the phone. OnePlus laboratory has some interesting stuff sometimes, but I usually wait for it to come out as a final product. And quick reply in landscape is useless because for me, it only works for Instagram and WhatsApp, even though there's plenty more apps it probably should be available for. Okay, so let's get into the home screen. But first, let me show you how I have the pull down set up. So I don't like having a bunch of quick toggles that I never use hanging around. So I remove most of them and just stick to the basic six, which fit perfectly with the half pull down. Everything I need is right there. No scrolling to the side needed. Now, when it comes to the wallpaper, I found this game over wallpaper using the Wally wallpaper app. It's free by the way. And surprise, the name of it is game over. <laughs> so it shouldn't be too hard to find. And the icon pack I chose is called Linebit. It does cost a buck or two, um, but I thought it went really, really well with the sort of neon light theme of the wallpaper. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't like how I make the icon sizes large on my setups, but I, I couldn't care less. Like this is called personalization. You can change the size to a bloody pinhead for all I care. It's, it's your phone, but this is what I like. Plus the large size icons also make it easy for me to swipe up to access the hidden folders that Nova Launcher offers, which you know I've been using instead of the OnePlus launcher. <laughs> Clearly. That said, I'm gonna upload the backup and restore Nova Launcher file and drop the link in the description in case you guys wanted the same launcher settings, because I'm not gonna spend another 10 minutes of this video going through every goddamn launcher setting. That's just madness. Although I have been known to get a little mad. Anyways, that's how I set up my OnePlus 7 Pro. I think the home screen looks sick. Um, I love the device settings I've used and the user experience it gives me, but what do you guys think of my setup? Do you like the look? Would you change any settings? Drop me a comment and let me know. But that about does it for this one. Show me some love with that like button. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new to my stuff and don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to next and to find out what new wallpapers and icons I'm using. Thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.